today in our journey through Luke, we're looking at the verses in Luke 8 and in Luke 11 because they're so similar. So firstly, let's read together Luke 8 verses 16 to 18, which is titled in the NIV, A Lamp on a Stand. No one lights a lamp and hides it in a clay jar or puts it under a bed. Instead, they put it on a stand so that those who come in can see the light. For there is nothing hidden that will not be disclosed and nothing concealed that would not be known or brought out in the open. Therefore, consider carefully how you listen. Whoever has will be given more. Whoever does not, even what they think they have, will be taken from them. And if we turn to Luke 11, verses 33 to 36, titled The Lamp of the Body. No one lights a lamp and puts it in a place where it will be hidden or under a bowl. Instead, they put it on a stand so that those who come in may see the light. Your eye is the lamp of your body. When your eyes are healthy, your whole body also is full of light. But when they are unhealthy, your body also is full of darkness. See to it then that the light within you is not darkness. Therefore, if your whole body is full of light and no part of it dark, it will be just as full of light as when a lamp shines its light on you. So both of these passages in these different chapters of Luke start pretty much in the same way, saying that no one lights a lamp and hides it away, but rather puts it up on a lampstand. But what is this light that Luke's talking about? At the beginning of Psalm 27, it says, the Lord is my light and my salvation. God is the light and God is the creator of light. In the creation story in Genesis, we see that God says, let there be light. And there was light. God saw that the light was good and he separated the light from the darkness. In Exodus, God uses a pillar of fire in the wilderness so that the Israelites could follow the light and know which way to go. So in the Old Testament, then, we see that the light is the sign of the presence of God. So when we come to the New Testament and to Jesus, what then is the light? In John 8, verse 12, Jesus says, I am the light of the world. This is a powerful statement then when we consider the Old Testament. Jesus is saying something about who he is. So this then tells us that the light that we put on the stand is Jesus and we put him there because people need to see him. But how do they do that? In John 9 5 it says that that Jesus says, while I am in the world, I am the light of the world. But Jesus is no longer in the world. So where is the light? We need to turn to Matthew's Gospel and chapter 5. And if we just read a couple of the verses of another very similar passage, but there's one important difference. So in Matthew 5 verses 14 to 16, Jesus is speaking to his crowd of followers and he says, you are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your father in heaven. So the light now is in Jesus's followers. He says, you are the light of the world. A light that should not be hidden. Jesus instructs his followers to let your light shine before others. But how do we as believers and followers do that? How do we put our light up on a stand? 
Jesus says that that light needs to be put on a stand so that people can come and they can see it. I don't think Jesus is talking about people coming into church. You would expect, though, that a church is filled with that light. But I don't think Jesus means that they need to come to church to see that light. I think Jesus means that when people come into our presence or when we enter into theirs, when people come into contact with us as believers, they should be able to see the light of life, the light of Jesus. But is this really the case? I think maybe we all turn our lights on as we enter church where we know people are looking to see whether or not our lights are fully on. But do we always live day by day with our light up on a stand? Living this light and with this light is more than what we do on a Sunday. It's how we live every single day. 1 John 1 6 says, If we claim to have fellowship with him, being Jesus, and yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not live out the truth. As followers of Jesus, we can't be hypocrites. If we're not living out the light of Jesus every single day, then there's times where we're hiding that light under a bowl. And if that light's hidden, when people come into our presence, all they see is darkness. So how do we make sure our daily lives are giving off light? Funnily enough, when we read this passage in Luke 8, it's not really about what we say or even initially by what we do. Let's have a look again at verse 18 in Luke 8. It begins, therefore, consider carefully how you listen. Listen? Listen to what? What does Jesus mean? Well, we need to have a look at these few verses within the context of the whole chapter and specifically what comes before it. So if you look in Luke 8, just before this passage is the parable of the sower. Now, I don't want to say too much about this parable because this is what John is going to be bringing to us next week. So let's take a look at the very last verse of the parable. Verse 15 in chapter 8, it says this. But the seed on good soil stands for those with a noble and good heart who hear the word, retain it, and by persevering produce a crop. Those who hear the word, retain it, and by persevering, produce a good crop. So those who listen carefully to the word of God will produce a crop. They'll produce fruit. The Bible talks a lot about producing fruit. In Matthew 7, Jesus talks about people who are true or false prophets and disciples. He talks about how to recognise them. He says there that those who are good or true will be recognised by their fruit. But what is that fruit? Well, we have to turn to Paul's letters to find that. And in Galatians 5, we get the best explanation. In Galatians 5, it says that we are to serve one another humbly in love. And the fruit that shows we're doing this is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. The fruit in our lives is produced not by us trying to be more loving or more patient, not trying to be kinder or faithful or not forcing ourselves to have self-control. The fruit in our lives is produced by the light within us. It's produced by being a disciple and a follower of Jesus. It's produced by listening to the word of God. It is hearing the word, learning it and living by it. James tells us in the first chapter of his letters that we cannot merely listen to the word. 
but we have to do what it says. We need to practice what we preach, live what we believe. And we have to use that life that Jesus has given us, not for ourselves, but for the benefit of others, to build others up, to love others, to encourage them, to show them the love of Jesus, to show them the light. And the more we do this, the more we live in a way that gives a light, the more we find we're able to. In the rest of verse 18, Jesus says, whoever has will be given more. Whoever does not have, even what they think they have will be taken from them. If we use what Jesus gives us for the good of others, he will trust us with more. When we give it away, he will replenish us. Mark says it well in his gospel when he talks about the lamp on the stand in chapter 4. In verse 24, he records Jesus saying, Consider carefully what you hear. With the measure you use it, it will be measured to you and even more. We need to use what Jesus gives us for the benefit of others. And if we don't use it, if we don't shine our light for others, then we're in danger of losing it. Luke 11, 35 warns us, see to it then that the light within you is not darkness. See, those who think they're good on their own merits, who seek to shine their own light, who try and bring that fruit about by themselves, force that love, that peace, that kindness in a false way, will find that the light of Jesus dims and the darkness within them will be exposed. Light and darkness are separated. They are separated by God at creation and they're separated by Jesus. In John 8, 12, when Jesus declares, I am the light of the world, he goes on to say, whoever follows me will never walk in darkness but will have the light of life. Light and darkness are separated. This light that is Jesus, that is in us as followers, that he asks us to put on a stand for others to see, that light is life. You read it again. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of of life. Life. That is what that light is. That light is life. It's this life that he offers to those who are living in darkness. There are people walking around who need the light of life. In John eleven ten, Jesus says, those who walk at night stumble because the light is not in them. Job tells us in chapter 18 of his long and sorrowful book of darkness that the person who is in darkness is the one who does not know God. Maybe you're listening to this and this is you. Maybe you know that you are in darkness. You feel like you're stumbling around in the dark. Maybe the darkness feels safe and familiar. But it's not the best place to be. And you don't have to remain in darkness. It is possible to come out of the dark and into the light. Jesus says in John 12, 46, I have come into the world as a light so that no one in belie who believes in me should stay in darkness. No one has to stay in darkness. So my fellow brothers and sisters in Christ, why does your light need to be on a stand? Why does Jesus say this? Why do the Gospels report this? Our light needs to be on a stand because there are people living in darkness 
And Jesus wants to invite them into the light. And if you're a believer, he wants you to join him by shining his light through you for others to see. And if you're not a follower of Jesus, then I want to extend that invitation to you. I want to invite you to come out of the darkness and receive the light of life. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you and praise you that as believers you have entrusted the light of life to us. That when we seek to follow you, when we obey your commands, when we follow you closely, when we read your word and we do it, that you put your light in us so that others may know you. Lord, I thank you that you trust us, that you make, you make us to be a part of this life-giving light. And Lord, for those who have not known that light, who feel like they're stumbling around in the dark, who can feel that darkness pressing in on them, Lord, I pray for them. I pray that they would see a glimpse of your light. I pray even now, Lord, that they would seek you, that they would close their eyes and open their hearts to the light of life that you pour into them. Lord, that they would hear your voice calling them out of the darkness and into light. Lord, place people around them that can show them that light, who put their light on the lampstand to show them the light of life. Lord, as we go into this week, may we be filled with the blessing and the goodness of your light, not for our sakes, but for the sake of others and for the sake of your glory. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Oh,